In this video, we're going to set up a nice custom cursor icon. It will be animated and it will change depending on what object we're hovering over. This is an excellent way to provide more context to your player. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games, and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. All right, so here's our goal. Over here is a simple character just idling around. Now you can look at my cursor right now and see that it's a simple arrow, but it's different from the default one. And now if I mouse over the character, yep, there you go. You can see the mouse change to indicate that I can interact with this unit. Now I can click on it and there you go. The unit is now selected. And over here, I have some basic RTS controls that we made in a previous video. And with the character selected, you can see that the mouse is now different. The cursor is animated and it's essentially indicating that I can move my character around. Now over here on the left side, there's a nice object. And again, as I mouse over, yep, there you go. We have a nice grabbing animation. So I can right click, my character goes there and picks up the item. Then down here, we have some more enemies. And again, as soon as the mouse passes over, there you go, the mouse is converted into a nice attack cursor. So it's nicely animated, telling me that I can click on this unit in order to interact and attack it. I can also deselect, and without the unit selected, there you go, it goes back into the normal arrow icon. So here you can see a whole bunch of uses for a custom animated cursor, which really enhances the play experience and gives the player some more information. Now you can easily add tons more animations to fit whatever actions your game actually has. Now, if you haven't played it yet, then go check out my game, Survivor Squad Gauntlets, which is included in the game bundle and uses animated cursors extensively in order to provide more information to the player. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. All right, so this is our goal. Let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in our starting scene. All we have is a simple character here just standing around. I have some simple RTS mouse controls that we built in a previous video. So I can click to select my character and then click anywhere to move him. There's an item in here, so I can click. He moves towards it and grabs the item. And there's a bunch of enemies here, so I can click to attack them. And as you can see, right now there are no cursor icons. So every action is using the same basic default mouse cursor. This would definitely look a lot better if we had a nice custom cursor depending on what's underneath our mouse. So let's do just that. Here in our project files, let's create a new C-sharp script. Let's call this our cursor manager. Let's make a game object and drag the script onto it. Okay. Now in here, this will be our manager script. So this script will be responsible for setting the active cursor and playing all of the animations. So let's start off by just seeing how we can change the starting cursor. So let's make a basic void start. And then here, in order to change the cursor, we use cursor.setCursor. Now this, as you can see, requires a texture, so let's add a field for it. Okay, let's set it in the editor. So here, let's drag our texture, and in the project files, I have a whole bunch of textures for the various cursor types that we're going to use. And over here on the import settings, you can see that they are all being imported out of texture type cursor. So let's select and use our basic default arrow. All right, there's our texture. Now back in our script, let's use the cursor texture in here. And then we have the hotspot. So this is the offset from the top left side of the texture. So over here is the arrow icon opened up on Photoshop. And as you can see over here, the edge of the arrow is right there on 1010. So that's what we use in here. For our hotspot, we pass in new vector two of 1010. And then we have the cursor mode. So this is where we define either a software or hardware cursor. So the difference being that the software cursor gets updated whenever the screen updates. So if your game is not running at a very high frame rate, then the software cursor will look slightly off. And the hardware cursor is directly modifying the actual cursor for the operating system. So it looks perfect even if the game is running at a low frame rate. So in any case, the one we choose is simply automatic. So it will lose hardware if possible and will go down to software if not. All right, so just like this should be working and we should be able to see our cursor using our custom cursor texture. Let's test. And yep, as soon as the game runs, we now have our own custom cursor. Awesome. All right, so now that the basics are working, let's add some animations. 
So the way we're going to do that is instead of a single texture, we're going to play textures over time. So in our film, instead of having just one texture, let's have an array of texture. Then we define an int for our current frame. Then also a float for our frame timer. And another int for the frame count. And another float for the frame rate. So all of these films will allow us to easily animate our textures. So for the current frame, that's the current frame on the entire array. Then the frame timer, that's going to be the time elapsed on the current frame. The frame count will be the total size of our array. And the frame rate will be how fast we shift between frames. So we're going to have our cursor texture array and let's also expose these two. So we expose the frame count and the frame rate. So now here back in the editor, let's set our fields. Let's use the nice move animated cursor. So we're going to have two textures. Let's put this one and this one. So on the frame count, that's the total amount. So in this case, it's two. And then the frame rate, let's try playing them at, let's say 10 frames per second, so 0.1. Okay, so back in the code here, let's make a simple update. And on update, let's count down our timer. All right, so here it is. We simply count down the frame timer by time dot delta time. When it's under zero, then we increment by the frame rate. We also increment the current frame by one, and we use the remainder in order to loop back to zero, and we simply call our set cursor function. So there it is, very simple. Let's test. Here we are, and yep, there we have our very nice animated custom cursor. Awesome. Okay, so now that we have our animated cursor, next let's add the ability to have several different ones. So back in the code here, let's first start off by creating an enum for our cursor types. So let's make a public enum, call it our cursor type. And for now, let's make the arrow and the grab cursors. Now we're going to need all of the frames for each cursor type. So let's make a simple class to hold all of that data. So down here, let's create a public class. Let's call this our cursor animation. And inside, let's store a field for our cursor type. Then we're going to have the things that we need from up here. So we need a texture to the array. Then we're also going to need a float for the frame rate. And finally, we also need a vector two for the cursor offset. All right, so that's all the data we need. And now up here, let's make a list of our class. And we're going to set this in the editor. So let's make this a serialized field. And now in order for a custom class to show up in the editor, we also need to go down here and add the attribute system.serializable. If you don't add this, then this custom class will not show up in the editor. Okay, so this should be working. Let's go back into the editor. And yep, we have our cursor animation list. And now let's add our two types. So here we have our two elements. First one for the arrow, the second one for the grab, and let's fill this up. All right, so there it is, all the various textures along with the frame rate and the offset. Now in here, we're using just a simple class to fill in our data, but if you'd like, you could easily convert all this to work with scriptable objects instead. So if you wanted to implement this system in a more, let's say, designer-friendly way, then that would be one way you could do it. But for now, then this simple approach will work just fine. So back in the code here, let's make a function to set our active cursor type. And let's store it in a field. So on update, we're going to use this one instead. So up here, let's get rid of the one on the textures. All right, so just like that. So we call this function in order to set our cursor animation. And then this is the one that we use on our update. So all the logic is working exactly the same. Now, just for testing, let's add some inputs. So here on update. So when I press the T, let's load up the cursor animation on index zero and on Y, the one. Okay, so let's test. Okay, so for starters here, we have our normal arrow cursor. So this one just has a single frame, so no animation. Now press the button and there you go. Now we have our second type of cursor. And I'll press another button and back to the first one. So first, second and so on. All right, so we can now swap our active animated cursor. Awesome. Now let's work on making it activate automatically depending on what the mouse is hovering. 
So over here in the scene, I have a bunch of objects and one in here is the item. Now this item already has a simple collider. So that's what we're going to use in order to detect when the mouse is hovering. So for that, let's make a very simple script. So a new C-sharp script, call this our cursor object and let's drag it onto our item. Okay, now in this script, all we're going to do is add the functions for the mouse. So we're going to have on mouse enter and also on mouse exit. So these are standard functions by mono behavior. So they get called whenever the mouse is over the collider and whenever it exits. Now let's set a field for our cursor type. So cursor manager dot cursor type. And now back in the editor over here for our item, let's select the grab cursor. So now all we need is to have a function in order to modify the cursor. So let's go back into the cursor manager. In here, let's expose that function. Now we need to know the cursor animation that matches this type. All right, so there it is, very simple. We just cycle through our cursor animation list and return the one that matches the type that we're looking for. So we can now go up here and simply call this function down here, the set active cursor animation, and we get the cursor animation of this cursor type. All right, so all we need is to call this function in order to modify our cursor. And actually up here, instead of accessing the list, on start, let's call this function and pass in the arrow. So by default, we have the arrow. Down here, let's get rid of our testing. And now all we need over here on our cursor object is to call that function. So that means we also need a reference to this script. So we can do it by making a simple singleton. So there you go, we have a static instance of our cursor manager. So back in the cursor object, we access the manager, access the instance, in order to call the function to set the active cursor type, and we pass in this cursor type. All right, that's pretty much it. And when we exit, let's use the arrow. Okay, that should do it, let's test. So here we have the normal arrow cursor, and as I go over the item, yep, there you go, now there's a grab, move out, and there's the arrow, arrow, grab, and so on. All right, awesome. So just like this, our cursor is correctly selected depending on what object it is hovering. Now all we need is just to expand upon all of this. So first let's add the other cursor types. So we just need to add them over here on our enum. So there, select, attack, and move. Now we need to fill up the rest of the fields in the editor. All right, so here's all the data. Again, instead of doing it this way, you could use a script on the object, but in here it works. Now we need is to add our script onto these various objects. So for example, over here on the unit, let's add the cursor object. And in this one, let's select the select cursor. And over here on the enemies, drag the cursor object. And this one is the attack cursor. Okay, that should do it. Let's test. Okay, so here we are. And we start off with the arrow cursor. Okay, so far so good. Now let's mouse over the unit. And yep, there you go. It changes into the unit selection. Now if I move away, yep, there you go. Back into the arrow. Now I'll go into the item. Yep, there's the grab with the animation. And I move away, yep, back into the arrow. And finally over here, the enemy. And I mouse over, and there you go, there's a nice attack animation. All right, so everything is working correctly. We have all of our cursors correctly working. So everything is working, I can select the character. Over there is the item, there's a nice cursor. So I move it, I grab it, and over here, I click on top of the enemy. And yep, there you go, it all looks great. All right, now just one more thing. Let's swap out the arrow for a move cursor whilst the unit is actually selected. Now, in order to do that, there are many approaches we can take. So we could, for example, make the RTS script be responsible for deciding what cursor should be used. So that would be one approach. Another valid approach that might be easier is simply to use an event. So let's go with that one. So over here on the cursor manager, let's go all the way up. And now let's create an event. So we have a on cursor changed event. Now let's do a custom event args. All right, here it is. Now I also covered events in detail in another video, so check that out to learn more. So we have our event and down here, whenever we modify our active cursor type, let's fire off that event. All right, just like this, we have our nice event. 
And now over here we have the game RTS controller. So this one was made in the previous video. And now in here we can listen to that event. So we make a start, go into the cursor manager instance. We subscribe to that event. And then in here we're going to check if the cursor has changed into the arrow one. And if so, then we test if we have unit selected. And if so, then we use the move cursor instead. All right, just like that. And finally, also down here, when we deselect our units, if we have none selected, then we also go into the normal arrow. All right, that should do it. Let's test. Okay, here we are, and so far so good. We have the arrow and all the other cursors are working. So the attack, the selection unit, and the item. Yep, all of them working. Now if I select the unit, yep, there you go. Now the cursor has changed into the move cursor, so I can now move it around. I can attack and so on. And now if I deselect, yep, there you go, back into the normal arrow cursor. So there it is, we have some extra logic in order to make our cursors more responsive. So here you can see how we can very easily add some nice animated cursors which help the game look better and much more responsive. So go ahead and draw some nice cursors for whatever actions you have in your game. Now if you haven't played it yet, then go check out my game Survivor Squad Gauntlets which is included in the game bundle and uses animated cursors extensively in order to provide more information to the player. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.